Thanks for listening to Fluff and Crunch, where we talk about the connection and sometimes disconnect between system, setting, and story in tabletop RPGs. Well, I'm recording now. Good morning. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Uh, actually, I had a really terrible day, but we'll leave that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's try to fix that. Okay, let's let's, let's try to rest. cap off your day with something <laughs> pleasant uh, instead of rest of my week to fix this today. So, you okay. know what? Here's I had, what we'll do. I had we'll, a good weekend though. Okay, good. We'll cap off a crummy Monday with good stuff so that you can start Tuesday with a fresh slate. No, it's not going to help. <laughs> but it's going to happen. It's totally going to happen. The rest of my week is now fixing what went wrong today. So, uh, but yeah, I had a good weekend, so that was good. Good. Any gaming? I did. We played on Thursday night. Who ran? Uh, I I ran. What did I run? Oh yeah, I, uh, so I ran the next part of my uh, next part of my adventure. So I went into the big plot and they they solved the problem. But I had the uh, I had the bad guy. I haven't started the bad guy because at the moment I'm like, well, the bad guy is so powerful. He is just a walking plot device. So, you know, the bad, if the bad guy was to turn up and just like kick ass, he kicks ass and they're just like, well, we're not fighting him. He's like, yes, good. That's the wise decision. He is not started. Please don't fight him. <laughs> um, or I will but, hand wave it and you will all die. I did. Well, accidentally is the right word. Um, I did end up killing Brian's character, like outright. These things happen. Um, yeah. But it was one of those things that, so he'd got, Scott had run away. Brian was still in range. So this monster attacked Brian, did a ton of damage, attacked him in next, like the following round and took him to zero. Okay. Not the end of the world. And Scott's too far away to be able to get heal him in one round. Well, it's fine. He's got, he's got three rounds to be able to, you get three death saves. You know, he's not going to, he's not going to die. And, you know, normally sure. well, I've never had a player die to death saves before. They always roll successes or a 20 and they're fine. So first round he rolls, you know, he failed. Okay. Next time, it's fine. Scott's going to get there next round. Not a problem. As long as you don't roll a one. And he rolled and, a one. And he rolled some ones. But he rolled a one. So that counts as two fails on a death save. So he was like, oh, you're dead. Luckily, they're working for Anubis. So I'm like, okay, I just did a oh. like, Anubis. Brings you back, but just take some of the stuff he's giving you away. And it was like, that's, that's cool. But it was that moment where like, oh, wow, I haven't killed a player in D&D for like a really long time. It's like I wasn't even trying. This was just, yeah, luck killed him. So I was like, oh, okay. I can deal with this. But so, yeah, yeah. that was, <laughs> hey, there was that momentary. Happen, you know what? Uh, if there's no if there is no true risk there's no challenge if there's no challenge there's there's really at the bottom at the end of the day there's i think there's no interest things get old and tiring really quickly when there isn't somewhere in the game the possibility that those kinds of things can happen so yeah it was like well i don't really want i want the death to mean something but i also can't have one player so i need to bring him back right yeah. but They've, I've given them some other stuff. I can take away the other stuff. That's yeah. the trade-off. That's that's cool. fine. Um, so you do say you played Aris again? Yes, we played Aris. Uh, we were down uh, two players actually. One of my uh, one of my players, uh, his wife asked him to go to a Ted Lasso party. I have no idea what that entails. Maybe mustaches and what? soccer. Or did um, they just watch it? I, I don't know. But but so he went to that, and then one of my other players wasn't wasn't feeling so hot. So he. Um, he uh, stayed home, and so Chuck and Jody, the married couple that are in my group and have been just terrific play testers, uh, came and we played Aris. And um, I actually ran the opening scene, opening encounter, but we call it a scene in two D twenty land of uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker Book One, Stolen Land, where if you're familiar with Pathfinder Kingmaker or not, uh, where the um, the characters, the player characters are charged with going down into the stolen, land, stolen lands and doing stuff. And they go to Oleg's trading post and they protect Oleg and his wife Svetlana against uh, the raiding bandits. So we just did that. We just had some, some you know, a little bit of travel, some interaction and role play, some survey and planning, and then they beat the crap out of some bandits. And what was nice is that she made a, a warrior type character came up with a really interesting talent um, per the system. And then he made a, a basically like a, a paladin sort. He's, I mean, there really is, there is not a paladin in the game. However, there is the archetype of a cleric. So he made, he made like a battle cleric who yeah. had some battle focused spells and, um, and was 
I'd say like mediocre in combat, but earnestly tried really hard, which like character wise that, that worked. So, uh, yeah, so we played it and, um, and they, uh, man, typos are a biatch, um, you know, oh, it's so obnoxious. And then the horror, the horror of like, you, you, you toy with, there was one place in the book that I had, uh, there was a rule that I had changed and then changed back over the months there was one place where i missed it so i fixed ah, that and i love the fact that drive through enables the the re-release so mm-hmm. i just fixed them and boom everybody actually you know what i need to get your the email you use with drive through we'll do that offline yeah so that i can give you a copy through drive through so that you can get updated when i find those little bits uh anyway so it worked well it worked well the the spells worked out uh there was one i'd like to go through actually that yeah um from the jump seemed like oh this is going to be complicated but we figured out a way easily to make it feel right and work the way we wanted it to so what we're going to do today is create a couple of spells using the spell creation system so that you can understand it better because it's this yeah, it sounds like a good idea it, it's the uh, it's the slippery part of the game i have i have i that's just the way it is um, so for those of you, by the way, also, uh, and I'm, I'm springing this on Chris because I, I hadn't mentioned this to you before, but I am going to put a discount code in, uh, in this, in the notes to this episode and actually the one from last week, there's the, the same code is there. And so the game, which is normally $15 because it is 239 pages and five months of work, uh, you through that code, it is discounted it's discounted to 10. And so while Chris goes and answers the phone, I'll explain that. So there is a discount code. It is good until July 5th. Um, drive through does not say whether it ends like when on that day or is it? So I have it marked until end uh, lasting until July 5th. So you can get the thing for $10. Um, and my plan moving forward is with the core book, the 239 page book, as I find things like typos, uh, as I find maybe if, if there are any math errors, you know, if there are things that need to be fixed, instead of re- releasing a separate errata uh, yeah, document, just I'm just going to go in every couple of weeks as I gather things and I'm going to fix them and re- and just you'll get notified that a new copy has um, has been released. So, all right. So we're all good to go. I, I talked yep. a little bit about the discount. So you can go buy the thing and start playing Eris or start converting um, with abandon things from other settings to a better system. So well, let's go ahead and create some spells. Um, I want to start off actually with this one because I was I was really happy with with how it turned out. Um, real quick overview for those of you who do not have the game. The spell creation system is a point-based system. Um, You start off with a number of points equal to the bonus that is associated with your spellcaster's governing attribute. So if you're a wizard, for example, that's reason. If you are a cleric, it's insight. If you're a sorcerer, it's presence. If you're a druid, it's insight. Why does it say that? Say again? Then that's, and I say that now. I thank you. Hey, I'm okay with that. Um, you know what's crazy? A little aside, like I have game books, you know, that I've paid 50, 60 bucks for, and I find typos in them. Yeah, and yeah. I find jumbled language. So even when you pay an editor, mistakes happen. Uh, when you're oh, your own editor yeah. or you're inflicting your editorial needs on your friends, it's going to happen. So well, I, appreciate- I think part of the reason Modifius does their sort of pre order thing where they, I don't know it's for sure, but you know, you, you get the PDF when you order and the book isn't going to come out for a yeah. while because then they <laughs> basically can use the public as, you ah. know, obviously, you know, they, they've already had an editor look at it and they've had people read through it. But like you said, when you've got that many words, there are going to yeah. be, yeah. there are going to be mistakes. I mean, it's just, that, that's the nature of the beast. It's yeah. un- so unlikely that it doesn't. Now, anyway, so the, the really quickly, the, for those of you who don't have the book, the spell creation system, yeah, the spell creation system enables you, you have to make your own spells. There are sample spells in the book, but the idea here is that it my, my sense is that magic should be idiosyncratic, it should be mysterious, it should be magical. And so I don't like 
long, long list of stock spells that people memorize and then meta the hell out of when they're at the table. So there is a common system, a common framework for creation, creating spells, but everyone's going to create their own spells. So um, the spells are organized into six templates. Each template is associated with one of the skills. That is fight, interact, no move, operate, survive. Each spell then, like any you know, spell in any game, has a series of variables. The cost, that is the essence cost to cast the spell. The difficulty, the difficulty you've got to roll to cast successfully. The duration, that's a no-brainer. That's from instant all the way up to like the whole scene or longer. Um, the impact, which is just the loose categorical term for the damage, the effect, what the thing does. Um, in, there's range in zones, no brainer. And then there's also a fuzzy wuzzy uh, variable I call force. And that is for like your utility spells where you have to quantify something like, how much can I lift? You know, like that's not as that utility spells are actually harder to quantify than combat spells. So, um, so in some cases, force as a variable that you buy with points would be swapped out for impact because if you want to make like a levitate i mean actually one of my sample spells in the book is levitate things you're not doing damage to the things but you have to have some kind of accounting for weight and mass so anyway so for those of you who don't have the game it's a point-based system whereby you you gain points to spend on the things you want like range damage duration effects by adding to the essence cost to cast and or the difficulty that you have to roll. So what I've seen thus far in my play tests is most players who have created their own spells have decided to keep the difficulty low, but the cost high, which then ends up with them only being able to cast maybe two spells in, a, uh, in a, an action scene, but they're almost certain to cast them. You can balance that the way you wish. So um, anyway, the do you have after reading through this more do you have any questions comments or gripes or anything anything like that anything to be be, be helpful uh for the conversation uh, i have before? one now purely because i was thinking about how the spell i want to do works and so i was reading the fight spell yeah and it says blah blah, blah. spells cause physical harm yeah all control of others oh that's gonna okay anyway uh a force bolt fight yeah kind of examples some of these can be opposed depending on their nature now, whether a spell would be opposed or not, oh, it's in the freaking thing above. All spells that could, because I was going to say, right, the fact that it can or can't be opposed should actually make the spell, if a, if a spell can be opposed, that should probably make it easier to cast. Yes. And it says that in there. Yep. I started so, on the fight thing. Here's the deal. Yeah, ignore that. Though. So, Remember yes. in 2D20, <laughs> no, you fine, can, though. in this, in, in Aris, you can choose as a reaction to oppose something in an action scene. So like if someone attacks you, they can, you can choose to oppose the attack and then it becomes a struggle. Okay. If you're familiar with 2D20 mechanics, you know what I'm talking about right now. Yeah. What I decided is that of the six spell templates associated with each of the six skills, some of them are by nature opposable, not like a thumb, but you know, they can be opposed. <laughs> can be um, uh, and some of them, it's a choice. And so if you decide to make a spell opposable, that's optional for that, you gain extra points to spend on the spell because you're throwing in a wild card into whether or yeah. not it's going to work. So like, for example, if you wanted to make a spell that made like, you know, like vines come up out of the ground and like, you know, tie someone to the ground, you could make that opposable. Like they're trying to like break the vines as they're coming up out of the ground. And because of that, that open door to spell failure or spell ineffectiveness, you get some extra points to spend on the spell. That bit there means that the spell that I want to do where I was like, I'm not sure how we're going to do this now is like, oh, now I can see how we're going to do it. Cool. I like that. All right. So really quickly, my, uh, my player, Chuck, who is like really good, he's actually, uh, he, he's, he's studying to be a math teacher. So you would get along with him famously. Um, numbers and things like that and he's actually i am very thankful for that kind of eye you know toward the toward the quantification of things he decided to make a spell uh for his cleric his battle cleric that would involve the creation of a celestial blade that would then attack a an enemy um and uh, i think we've 
probably heard of a spell that does something like that from another game. And that's why he made it, because he wanted to see if he could make that spell. So um, what template, okay, no-brainer, what template do you think he went with? Well, it's got to be fight. It's the only one. It's, yeah. it's got to be fight. Unless, because is, have you got, what would you use for, all right, let's say instead of creating a sword that runs around battering people, let's just say I want to create, I know, a cart. I want to create a cart. What would I use for that? A what? A, you know, a cart, like a horse and cart. Oh, a cart. Yes, sorry, I don't pronounce my T's. Well, I, I still pronounce issue it. you an R. Create a car, it's still do. the same. <laughs> Put some R's in an envelope and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so if um, I was wanting to create... Okay, so that's, that's a, a good question. So op operate is affect an existing thing. Yes. But if I want to create something from nothing... It, I, you know what? I think it should be based on... Remember what um, uh, Nathan Dowdle said about... Uh, one of the things that he said when we talked to him, the 2D20 system master, about uh, different kinds of characters. His main question is, what does this character do? And so what I'm thinking in this, in response to your question, is what does this spell do? You don't just create a cart. Like, are you... Well, I mean, I guess creating something well from... let's let's do not do the cart then. let's do a spell which is actually if, if i wanted to create a horse because i want to ride yeah. the horse i want to create a horse out of midair your celestial steed yes so what would we do that on well i okay here's an here's a, a, a uh this is like um what's the word i'm looking for i'll have to edit this out um full well, can we just knock out the others that Wait, may, let, is that let... the easiest way to do it elimination Okay. Well, it's not so a fight know, spell. So it's not a fight spell. It's not an interact spell. Uh, probably not, no. So it's definitely no, interact not a no is like spell. The, the way, the, the most obvious definition of interact is interpersonal relations. Right, so it's not It's that. not a no um, spell. It's not no. So then we've got move. Now, it's, it is going to create something that will move. Mm -hmm. So it could be that. Um, and then we've got operate and survive. Now, survive specifically says augments or change something about a character or another living being but we're creating a living being. So maybe. Here's, here's what I think, actually. If the purpose of the horse is to move you or something, I would actually call it a move spell. Yeah, I might sense. that's so its then, spirit. What... Yeah. I don't mean the spirit of the horse. I mean, like, the, no, no, I don't, the no, no. idea of the spell is like, okay, I'm going to create this, like, you know, spectral steed, and I'm going to gallop across the, the field or something like that to get there faster. So in that case, if I was summoning a creature for the purposes of attacking people, that would be a fight spell. I agree. If I guess the thing you Pokemon... could do here, though, is that you could have a talent which says, when I, like I'm thinking, I, I haven't read the talent sections. So anytime oh. I create anything like this from scratch, I'm always thinking like how roughly how fate does it when they create a, whatever they call them from scratch. Yeah. Stunts. Um, when you create a being you lower the difficulty by one, you know, something along those lines as a talent. So then it wouldn't matter. Then, then you can have, and your talent's called like summoner. So then it doesn't matter which of the skills you're using. Yeah. You're just better at doing it. Yes. And by the and way, so then, talent creation, it's trigger and effect. So when summoning a creature using magic or when creating a creature using magic. Yeah, no, that, that actually, that fits perfectly. All right, let's right, get back to our actual spell. Though. So spiritual blade, because that's it's, what it is. He calls it celestial oh. blade. It's and so it's a blade. fight. It's, it's a spiritual fight weapon. Spell. Sorry. If so it's, it, it's not spir it, it's not it spiritual, spiritual weapon. weapon. It, is it is the um, it's the gobots of uh, spiritual weapon transformers. <laughs> that, for start, no one, no one at Wizard of the Coast is going to listen to this. And if they did, they're not going to come and moan at us because we're doing their spell in another system. All right. <laughs> So here we go. Celestial uh, Celest Blade. Celestial it's a fight Blade. template. Definitely. Uh, it's a fight spell. The player decided to increase the duration from instant to rounds. So that costs one point. So it's going to last more. It's, yeah, so it's, it's going to last. It's going to last. Um, he decided sense. to increase the range from reach to close. That's another point. Uh... Yep. Right? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Wait, wait, is, is, is close, close is in the same zone, but Correct. not immediately next to you, isn't it? Correct. Okay, so another so point. Reach is relative to the individual yeah. character 
in action right there. So he he increased the duration. He increased the the uh, the, the range. That's two okay. points right there. Yeah. He then added. He then added the uh, piercing one effect, and okay. that cost two points because a, an effect cost two points. Actually, yeah. you know what? Wait a minute. Under impact. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me make sure that he got that right. Let me make sure I got that right. Um, well, it doesn't matter because we're doing it now. So that's fine. No. Um, did he? Wait a minute here. Did he make it opposed? No. Really? For a second. Why don't I just look here? I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, perfect. Okay, so he's got four points so far. All right. Yeah. Now, his intention for this was spiritual weapon. He wants to see if he can create a spiritual weapon. Now, the way he's got this set right now, the base difficulty for a fight spell is two. The base cost is also two. Yeah. So um, what That's he did, he's, he increased the difficulty by one, and he increased the cost by three to account for those four points so he yeah. ends up with a a difficulty three spell that has a cost of five essence to cast yeah. now this is a, this is what's called an ongoing spell an ongoing spell is any spell that has a duration longer than instant um and so the the essence cost for that is already accounted for he doesn't have to continue spending each round yeah. the, the cost to cast the spell because it's ongoing is already it's front loaded now the the tricky part came with how do we deal with the blade each subsequent round because it attacks every round doesn't it say what so it's going to attack every round it's not Correct. going to just it's going to do attack. damage it's going right. to actually have to do an attack now a spell this spell has a, a range of close so that i i just i said listen <laughs> you know the, the blade can't be farther than close range from you i have it written yeah. in the rules that if you have an ongoing spell that has a range of farther than reach you can spend one momentum to move the spell within okay. its range yeah <clears throat> so what i said when he first used it i thought wait a minute because he he defaulted to well i i rolled to cast the spell and now i'm going to roll again using the spell's target number to see if i hit the target and I thought that's kind of lame this this blade appears out of nowhere it should strike because it's successful the first time so I by fiat at the table said upon a successful casting it does hit but then on each subsequent round just to be fair so that it's not you don't get this automatic hit each subsequent round you roll against the spells target number again it doesn't cost any extra essence because you front loaded that cost and then you just see if it continues to hit. And if you want it to move, it has to stay within close range of you. But per the rules already, it costs one momentum to move an ongoing spell within its range. And it worked. Um, he so, took a he, he rolled the duration, you know, he took a six out of die and put it down in front of him on the, you know, for the number of rounds. And then each the beginning of each next of his turns he just rolled it down which was really simple he just turned it from three to two to one and, and his, his weapon did its thing and it worked and so, something else that one one last thing about our, our not spiritual weapon celestial blade um i do have flanking rules however flanking rules explicitly state uh characters and so we decided this does not this did not create a flanking because flanking bonus it doesn't it's not a bonus to hit you get a bonus momentum when you hit I'm like, we're not okay. going to give a blade momentum. So yeah. we just said, listen, per, per the wording of the rules, the blade's not a character. It doesn't, it doesn't create a flanking circumstance. All right, that raises a couple of things then. So the first one is you said that the actual casting of the spell isn't opposed because you're just creating the blade. But then Correct. in future rounds when it attacks, shouldn't that be opposed? I guess it could. Now, the NPC that he was using it against was a noteworthy NPC that could have used reactions. I was out of threat at that point, so it never even came to mind. Uh, okay. But you know what? That's a good point. I, I suppose you could. Now, if you used it against a minor NPC, miners can't use reactions, so there would be no way to oppose the attack, but I don't see why not. It already, And that sits within the rules. There's no modification you need to make to account for that. Um, and then the second thing that you think is that 
again, when you cast it the first time, it is you are casting the spell. Now, because it's difficulty three, you're going to have to bump your roll somehow to be able to hit that, probably. Yeah. If in the following rounds, it's the sword attacking, it's still, is it still difficulty three that it's attacking or is it just a normal melee roll, which would be difficulty, I can't remember, let's say one. Um, we went with the, the melee. We treated it as a, as if it were like in the, in, kind of by extension in the hand of the, um, the caster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I kind of think then the first one should be three because it's the, that's the difficulty you made the spell, but you get a free hit. Yeah. But then the other ones after that probably should be opposed, but they're down to difficulty one, which actually is way in counter in itself yeah. anyway, because it's costing two less for the difficulty, but it's now, now in, in five E each subsequent, when, when the weapon keeps attacking on its own, it's a bonus action, correct? Yes. Yeah. So what we did is we just treated this as a free action. Yeah. That makes sense. Because I think it would be weak to, to charge the player a minor action for something that he's already given up a valuable resource essence front end loaded, whether or not the thing ever hits again, um, he, he gave up that essence. So, uh, so yeah, that was it. And by the way, I have this spell, I am going to release, I have this spell statted out and described, and this is going to be available on pay what you want within the next day or so. Well, it'll be available already by the time this drops. Okay, what's another spell you want to make? I wanted to do magic missile, mainly for the reason the vast majority of, particularly in D&D, but almost every single spell in D&D, either you roll to hit yeah, or you roll to dodge. So most attack spells are opposed. Yeah. However, magic missile is special in the sense that magic missile is not opposed. You right. create some magic missiles Boom. and they hit people. They don't do a lot of damage, mm -mm. but they do hit people. Yes. Um, so I want to see if we can create magic missile. Okay. And the first thing straight away is, yes, it will be a fight spell, Easy. but this will not be opposed. Correct. So fight spells by default are not opposed. So you're not going to get any extra points for that. Sad face. Uh, so fight spell. Okay. It, the default of a fight template, a fight spell template is reach. That's weak. Yes. Let, let's so bump that out to medium. I was going to say, so that's going to cost us. So we start at reach to get to medium. It's going to cost us two more points. Correct. So you spend or two, two more points. spell points. So yeah, right. that's two extra. It's and, not and opposed. I, it's not opposed. So you've spent two points already. Yeah. Now, a little behind the scenes thing. When you are using a real character to make spells, your attribute bonus gives you points to start off with. Okay, we're not we're we're not starting we we're not working with the character, so we're actually starting at the artificial zero instead yeah. of having some points to work with already. Also, the default damage, the default impact of a spell is the character's attribute bonus in challenge dice. So attribute bonuses run from one to three. Um so we're also consider that that we are not taking we're not taking that into account. We're making just a, a a shell of a spell in effect but so far you've you've added two points because you've increased the range um let's I was gonna, so i was looking at the table so attribute modifiers can go higher but you'd have yeah. to have an insanely high stat which you won't have so right okay, that, right right, right. yeah if you have like if there were a, a an undead wizard that looks very much like a skeleton that thing's stats are going to be higher in some places. A dragon is going, an ancient dragon is going to have way higher stats in some ways. So yeah, the, but for, for player characters, the norm, the most common array of attribute bonuses is, is zero to three. So, um, okay. You've spent two points to increase the range to medium. Yeah. Now, so duration, I'm not changing, obviously. It's instant. It's instant. You fire. And what I mean by instant is that the spell goes off and does its impact slash effect in that round and now if there's something like um if you had a fireball and you added the uh persistent effect to it that is person gets lit on fire the effect of the fire is going to continue but the spell it the motive force of the spell is over so your little force yeah. bolts or whatever you want to call them is a duration of instant so how can we account for the spirit of because we can't undo the fact that in 2d20, you roll to see if a spell is successful. Yeah, but the thing is, like, we've recovered it because we're rolling to create the spell. We're not rolling to hit the person. Correct. 
So the fact that it is not opposed is is how I'm going for that. Now, the alternative is we could say make it a really easy spell to cast, that but too. in lower the difficulty, it's going to cost more. So I don't think I really want to do that. If, okay. I, if anything, what I want to do is I want to make it do less damage. Well, what you could do missiles rubbish. If you put no points into um, the impact, the damage, it's going to default to your character's attribute bonus. I want so to get like less than that. I want to make it minus one. Oh, you I can't, want to get... you can't nerf it that much. There is. The, well, I could, I, I... Why not? Instead of adding one, I'm taking one away. Of course, if your attribute bonus was only one, you've just created a spell which does no damage. Exactly. Well, it does All one right. CD, which means you have a one in three chance of doing nothing. Although I hate to break this to you, but in the game, I do. I hate. I hate. I hate. I hate rolling and you like you do no damage at all so a successful attack of any sort does a minimum of one point of its type of damage no matter what how can we replicate the fact that it can hit multiple people area area effect cost two uh, yeah but that hits everyone in an area no 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 area effect okay little little modification to what area effect is Per the rules, like in the SRD, it's it hits everyone within reach of the original target and then one additional okay. target within close range. I changed that. Area in Aris is one additional target within close range that is the same zone as the original target per effect rolled. So I reduced the oomph of area a little bit. Okay. Uh, oh, tell me. But how much more does it cost me to do an area effect spell then? Two points. Buying an effect is two points. Well, it's become very expensive, and I don't want to be. Yeah. Well. Well. Okay. Remember this: that initially, like, how do we how do we uh, throttle the use of spells by low level characters in level based games? They don't have very many spell slots, and the spells that they you know, they don't, they can't cast that many in a given period of time. And the spells that they have available to them are kind of weak. I don't have leveled spells. So how do I account for a new caster not being able to do as much as an experienced caster? Through the experience system, you can reduce the cost of spells later. So you can have your force bolt. And over time, as you become a more powerful caster, your force bol bolts become more powerful because they're easier to cast and they, whatever. Yeah. And the other thing, was is actually unlike a because you don't have your spell slots thing your I, I think i got this right essence recovers at the end of a scene essentially which means that if a, if a combat goes on a really long time yes you will run out of it but as soon as yep. you get to another scene you've got all your essence back yep. so unlike a wizard who as the day goes on gets weaker and weaker and let's say sticking on 5e terms of sorcerer these like your things you know like a warlock warlocks can't cast many spells right but they get to do it all day at least um, yeah, the other thing also to remember is that you can, there is a fortune option spend once per scene to recover all lost stress in one of your stress tracks. Nothing. So that would be vigor, resolve, or essence for a caster. So if you're in the middle of it and you're, you have just, this is the big fight and you burn through all your essence, you can choose to spend one of your fortune and you can't like, well, I did it, I have three different stress tracks, so I get to spend, no, no, you get one you can use as many fortune as you want in a scene, but this fortune spend, you can only do once and it replenishes all of one of your stress tracks. So, so there we'll are ways. With, yeah, we'll go with area because then that does what I want. Yeah. I can hit multiple people and I'm doing the absolute base damage. So I've added four in total, haven't I? Yep. So the cost, I don't want to increase the difficulty. If anything, I'd want to reduce the difficulty. But like I said, it's the difficulty to cast the spell, not to hit people because it's well, not you could How about this? you have your four points if you re if you moved the difficult if you moved the difficulty down to one and you move that over to the base cost the base cost is now three if you add those other four points that is now a essence cost seven spell you're probably going to use two-thirds upwards of your essence to fire that one spell i think we'll do that partly because that seven is not included in our attribute bonus. And if our attribute right. bonus was two, it is only costing five. Yep. And again, if you're starting off and you're like a level one caster, 
um, that's you go and you get like one or two level ones. Yep. You, you do not expect experience, the corner can... office with your new job. Yeah. So with more XP, I could lower the cost of this spell. Yep. Um, if when I roll to cast this spell, and I don't think that's what we'll go with is what I've got, because I'll, I'll recap in a minute. When I roll to cast this spell, if I generate momentum, what can I use them for? Can I still use them to bump damage? Because I don't know. Okay. If you... Momentum spends related to magic, all the same spends that you can do. Um, uh, you you know more damage. You can you can do that. Um, I only have two spell specific momentum spends thus far. I'm going to add more, and that is more damage or more impact if it's something like you're picking up something, or moves or move the spell if it's ongoing. That's all I have right now. Um, I deliberately left out spending momentum after the fact, spending momentum at all to reduce the cost because I I I want I want new casters to have that throttle on their their ability to cast so that they have to build up over time like any other character. Uh, well, but I am do... going to add more momentum spends in the future. I think you can do it, but do it as an opposite. So rather than be, it would work the same way, but rather than thinking as you, the spell you cast costs less, you could think of it as you drug, you gain mana, not mana, essence back. But I'd probably do it on a, like a two to one. So, you know, you get for two oh. momentum, you get one essence. Because I think that would make people think very carefully about, oh, two momentum, I can do like two extra damage here. That's a big deal. For one essence, is it worth it? I think one to one, you're right. I think one to one, it would be very easy to just always just gain more essence. You'd always choose yeah. gain more essence. I think if it's two to one, I think people are thinking that. You know what? What if I did this? I just wrote this down. What if I, what if as a momentum spend, you have two to one? Two momentum reduces after the casting a successful spell. Because remember, you only gain momentum on a successful roll. So if you screw up and you fail, you're out essence, period. That's it. Yeah. But two to one to reduce the essence cost, like say maybe repeatable to three, because repeatable is the three is, is usually the limit on those things. So you could burn through a momentum. I, you know what? I, and here's the thing. This is what happened in this session that we ran. It's funny. I'm motioning toward the wall that my garage is on the other side of, because that's where we play. <laughs> um, one of the things I really wanted is to strike a balance between meaningful choices and too many choices that cause analysis paralysis. Yeah. And the thing where I just absolutely lose it, lose interest in 5e is there are so few meaningful choices after you build your character. You just roll and try to hit and you roll and try to do damage. Like there's just not that. And I know there are people who would argue with me, I'm sure, but like that's how I see it. I wanted to provide meaningful choices that people can work with, but that don't bog the game down. And I like this as like, well, I have this limited resource. I, roll, I generated four momentum. Hey, that's really awesome. Do I want to reduce my, my cost by two? Or do I want to leave that momentum for the next person who has some badass thing they're going to do, but they need three momentum to do. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's the cool kind of meta conversation that always happens in these yeah. sessions. And I don't mean just my game. I mean like 2D20 in general. So are you happy with your force bolt? Uh, yeah. So I have a my force bolt, magic missile. Fact, technically, it's magic missiles. Because it I've is got multiple. In both uh, cases. So yeah, it is. difficulty one, cost seven, but again, that would be discounted. Medium range, non-opposed, instant, and it is area effect. Yep. So it hits multiple people, which yep. is exactly what I wanted to do. Cool. There you go. So here's the dirty little secret. And I think I've mentioned this to you. Maybe I've said this. I think maybe I said this on one of our other episodes about this game. You know, look, look, you could just go to one of the many online SRDs, you know, all the way back to, well, crap, all the way back to first edition, you know, Pathfinder SRD, first edition, any of these things. And just if there are spells that you like, just scroll through and start converting. And, and, and again, convert per the spell's spirit, not don't try to do like a one to one mathematical conversion. So, so the, the next one I want to look at is a bit weird because, well, this will be a good talking point because I thought I knew which one it was and then I've reread Fight. I wanted to do Polymorph Other, you know, where you turn someone else into a sheep or a yeah. frog, something like that. But, but with, you know, well, I guess because one of the things you always have with those is that that is really bad, but the minute they get hit, they turn back. 
Yeah. Which is always the get out clause from them being yeah, yeah. like stupidly powerful. Um, so I guess that's something. So then it'll be interesting to see how you can fit that in because that's like the the end point. Okay. But my first thing there is that I would originally, I was going to go with survival because survival says these spells augment or literally says or change something about a character or other living being. So that would imply that this is a survival spell. I agree. However, under fight, it says uh, cause physical harm or control of other characters. Now, this isn't controlling another character, but it is really screwing with them. I mean, control like restrain, glue to the wall. Uh, it's kind of doing that. I mean, I'd rather go with survival, but at least it, it's there's a conversation. Per the per the way that I understand the language that I used is you are you are either restore survival spells are used on living creatures. They either restore something, healing, or they imbue something, which could be a change. So I think this is this is totally a, a survive spell. Um, it is obviously opposable. Yeah. So you get um, you get two extra points for that. All right. So that gives me two extra. You start off with two points by making it opposable. Now, mind you, it doesn't have to be opposed. To oppose something is always a choice. So if yeah. you want to turn your friend into a frog and your friend's like, that's cool, they don't have to oppose it. So you, you have two points to work with. Survive spell, base cost is two, base difficulty is two, range is self, duration is instant. So how do we go here? Well, the first thing I need to do is change the, uh, to change the range because I don't want self, I want other. So I need to change it to, let's go with reach. So that's one point. Yeah. The duration uh, is the the one where you're gonna. How long do you well, want this to last? Yeah, I think rounds is rounds is fine. It doesn't want to do it for a long time. It wants to be rounds. Now the 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 duration increments are instant, and you might think, wait a minute. So you heal someone? No, no. But remember, it's because that restores them to their natural state. Yeah. So instant, um, rounds, minutes, tens of minutes whole scene or hours, whichever makes more sense. So those are the five increments of duration. And it's always in challenge dice, number of challenge dice equal to your attribute bonus. So we're not playing with that right here. If you had an attribute bonus of two, you'd roll two CD, and that's how many rounds it would last if you chose rounds. So is that what you want, rounds, or do you want minutes? Uh, I mean, minutes would be nice, but it's, it's only costing two. Let's go, right. Let's go minutes. All right, so you've spent three points so far. You've increased yeah. the, the duration by two steps, and you've increased the range by one step to reach. Oh, yeah, so you, I've written that wrong. But uh, since you made this opposable, you started with two points. So right now you're only in the hole by one point. So the next thing then is, are we talking about impact or force for what the thing is doing? Okay. This is where utility spells gave me gray hairs and a headache. Yeah. So uh, is it false then? Com well, here's the odd thing. Uh, not odd, but I I decided that, like, how do you account for things like, okay, I want to make like, you know, I want to be able to crawl. And this is an example I have in the book. You know, I want to be able to cl climb up a wall like a spider, or like a bug. Well, I have in the expense, when you when you pick a spell and you start building it, already implied in it is the existence of a single trait. So the idea of like, well, how do we account for mm, poly, you know, transforming someone into a frog or a whatever, that's already implied by you giving it a name. So that act is there already. Um, I don't think in this case that impact uh, is, we don't have to treat it like normal. We don't, there's no, there's no challenge dice for damage. Um, yeah. the only thing I would say is I would look at, I would use force and I would think about size, you know, so I mean, we're like, saying it's only on a humanoid. I think if you were to start it at humanoid and just leave it, the, the default is, uh, for force, the default is minor. And that takes into account like a, a minor item. Major would be obviously the next step up and large would be human sized. Massive is something much bigger. You want to transform like a you know, a buffalo or a, an elephant into a frog, that's going to be a little more oomph. So actually, Wait. in this case, I would ask for two more points to step it up to large. Yeah. So that's three points that you have to account for now. Uh, and that's 
do it. No, so out of interest, if we added in the trigger, because this is not including it, this is the what kind of thing where you have to have the GM, which is what you're doing with all your spells anyway. If I wanted to say, right, right, hey, it does that, you cast it into this thing and now it's stuck like that. In theory, then someone can just beat on it and kill it. So if I want to say, oh, if anyone attacks it, it instantly turns back. Can I say, well, that's actually a bad thing. That's like a disadvantage. So can I have a point back? Yeah, I would. I would absolutely. I, I think that's. I think that's totally valid. And see, f folks, th this is where I about halfway through this process. Once I got the bones of it down, I realized I was trying to write a rule for everything, and I don't like that. And I think that there needs to be flexibility. For you know, you can't account for everything. And so this back and forth and the rulings instead of rules, this fits with the spirit of the game. But yeah, I think that absolutely makes sense. And if I'm going to be your GM, we now have consistency because unless I'm a jerk, that's how I'm going to treat those things. So I would give you a point back. So now at this point, you only have two points that you have to account for. Which I think I will leave. I considered putting the difficulty up to three, but then the spell is so cheap. It makes more sense to leave it at difficulty two and cost yep. two. Also, it's a pose, so I don't want to make it too cheap, right. uh, too high difficulty because it'll never go off. All right, so I have a difficulty two, cost two, polymorph humanoid that I've changed it to now with a range of reach. So again, so you need, this but spell... wait, you, you have two points that you have to account for. So you're probably going to bump your cost up to four. Oh, my cost starts at two, doesn't it? So it's, yeah, plus two is four. Yeah, yep. cost four. Um, so my range is reach, and that's the downfall of this spell because then now it's like, well, actually, reach isn't very far. So I, you know, I could have increased it to close or medium, and now it's a more expensive. But I've kept this as I've got to walk up and touch someone. Yep. Um, it's opposed minutes in duration. Okay, like I said, I could, you know, that'd be the trade-off. If I wanted one, and this is why I like this system. If I want one, I want it to, I don't need it to last that long. I just want it to last for, you turn into a sheep, you turn back. But I want to be able to do it at a longer range. Well, I could trade those off. I can do another version of the spell, which is yep. slightly, slightly longer range but for slightly lower duration, but I can yep. change up to humanoids, which is pretty now, cool. As you progress through character experience, you can spend, you, you can gain through experience points, additional spell build points, and you essentially can then go back into the spell, open the spell back up and tinker with it. Now, one thing that I do have stated explicitly in the experience system is you can't Let's say you made a spell that was medium range originally, and you decide later on, eh, I don't really want it to medium range, so I'm going to recoup that. Sp you can't do that. Like once you've bought it, to the, you're stuck with that. However, one thing, I don't know if you noticed this, but with ranges, you can buy out to the spell's maximum range, and range when it comes to difficulties is the same as other ranged attacks. But then you can buy back with additional um with additional spell build points, you can buy back the, the the shorter ranges. So for example, if you had a spell that had was default reach and you pushed it out to medium, that's two points, you could buy back the close range for an additional point. And then it right. means you would not have a penalty at, at reach, close, or me medium range. All three of those would be its optimal range because you've already spent points on the front end in constructing the spell. But anyway, back to the whole idea of the experience system. If you wanted to later on make this spell more powerful, and for, I don't know if you picked this up or not, but for spells that can be opposed, you can spend experience as build points to increase the difficulty that the target has to roll against. So oh. you could make the spell more powerful by making it harder to resist. That's cool. Yeah. I just, you know what, I, I, instead of, call me like an old soul, but like, I'd rather have something well-made that I can keep for a long time and, and get some like wear marks on it and keeps going rather than just like a bunch of disposable crap. Like that's how I try to be in my life. And so I'd rather have like a cool, for me personally, if I was going to play a, play a, play a spellcaster, I'd rather be one who has like this list of several spells that I've like massaged and tweaked and modified and empowered over time rather than just like I have all these spells and I never use half of them because they're garbage. And because we're higher level now, we only fight against like really big bad stuff. And so this spell is stupid and pointless. So there's two spells. Uh, one 
And by you picking Magic Missile is exactly what I anticipate and frankly what I hope people will do with this. Instead of being like, oh crap, a fantasy game where I have to make my own spells? Screw that. Just take the spells you like and convert them to a better system. Mine. There we go, yeah. I mean, I, they, they really don't have a huge amount of writing. You could write more about them to, like you have, you've got quite, you know, descriptions about yours, but mostly that's how you built them. But Yeah. Now, um, something... Oh, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say that there are going to be things that someone's going to pick at this and find ways to make spells which are way more powerful than they need to be. But at the end of the day, it's always made with the GM. So if the GM is like, well, I know what you've done there is within the written rules of the... Of, well, the written rules. Um, I'm not going to let you have that. I don't think that, like, that was how it was intended or in the particular combination you've got here, it's too powerful. I, I, that spell should cost more. It's the, it's the GM's decision. Yeah, and that's always going because, like you know, yeah, of course, with anything like this, you know, you you you've got a small amount. You've only got a small amount of things you can, the, the few levers you can pull, and you've got to make all those levers work on the same point system. Yep. There's always going to be things like my immediate thing is like, well, the jump from, in like with duration, the jump up durations is 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 massive. Um, with like how powerful that could be. So you can see someone just massively abusing that. Yeah. And then if you make it more expensive, then those spells that aren't as good cost loads more. So yeah. then your option would be like, depending on what spell template is, each of the spell variables have different costs. That would be horrible. So yep. you've gone with a simpler, easier to understand yep. system. Someone likes this and go, actually, I'm going to make it way more complicated. Yep. Fine. And here's, now I, I had originally entertained the idea of, for example, for, um, <clears throat> for range or especially duration, having it be a, uh, like a stacking cost. So instead of each increment costing one extra, it costs one, then two, like buying extra uh, D20s in yeah. most of the, D20, the, the, the games now. And I went against that. I think it's, it's easier to house rule more layers and more complexity than it is to house rule out complexity when it's there. And so I opted for what you just said. I figured, you know what, it's going to be easier if people just, you know, start off with this. And if you as GM are like, ah, this is creeping too much, house rule it. Now, something that's very important, the spell creation system, the entire system in everything except for the optional rules sections of section of chapter nine, which is game mastering. Everything in the core book is your bog standard fantasy. It's your high fantasy, medium to high fantasy. Okay. Eris as a world is grittier and has some breaks. So I have added, and I'm in the process of adding for like the Eris world book that I'm now working on. Yeah. Uh, adding ways layers of not necessarily complexity but change to this system that make it a little and this is across the board it's not just magic but make it a little a little grittier um, but i found it's much easier it's much easier to add to than and make things still function as, as a coherent system than subtract from and um you know and that so now real quick because i got a jet here in a minute I uh, I am working on the first supplement, and by supplement I mean a a short. We're talking like eight pages, pay what you want document, suggested free. I'm going to put these out about monthly, and I'm going to. I've created ten talents because the talent creation system, although far simpler than the spell creation system, does involve tinkering a little bit with something like points. So I created 10 talents. Some of them are actually ones that my players have created. Uh, I created five spells. Um, one of them is that Celestial Blade. Uh, and Healing Fire is another one he came up with, which is an area effect heal spell. And then I created five monsters um, that are, or foes, whatever you want to call them, that are all Aris specific. One of them, a giant riding bird, not very specific, but, you know, fantasy tropish. The other four are my IP and fit within the world. So my idea is that, you know, listen, if you download the Judas Priest, which has the updated streamline rules and an adventure and characters, and you want to look at other angles or pieces of the system, you can, you can download these other supplement things for free before taking the plunge on the game. But again, discount code $5 off in this, uh, the notes for this show. 
I hate advertising, but I have to do it. <laughs> Could never be in sales. It's just not in my, it's not in my bones. So, yeah. All right. Groovy. Maybe you can get your group to play this. Uh, yeah, but not while we're playing our current thing. And at that point, we want a break from five E's. Yeah. And any other fantasy thing, I imagine. But yeah, at some point, I'm sure we will. Very cool. Thank you so much for listening. You can visit our show's homepage at anchor.fm slash fluff and crunch. That's F L U F F N C R U N C H. We would really appreciate feedback and reviews on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to this on. Thanks so much.